Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove the factory fitted radio on a 2009 Honda CRV. Not a long job, but without the correct tools and without the correct working you know, procedure, you might damage the dashboard. So just pay attention to some of the finer detail in this video and everything will be fine. So first things first, if you're going to be replacing the radio on this vehicle with say an aftermarket radio, you're going to need some bits and bobs. Namely, a wiring loom converter. This one's made by Connex2, as you can see there. This website, or Amazon, eBay, etc. Car shops, you can get these from CT20HD01. And that's to convert your wiring so it'll plug into most aftermarket radios that use a standard ISO connection. So that's your aftermarket connection, and that's the one that plugs into the car's wiring loom. Next up, you're going to need a fascia panel to make the radio fit into the dashboard. Now, this fascia panel kit is a double dim one to get the larger screen type stereos into the vehicle. And again, it's made by Connex2. This is actually a wiring kit and fascia panel combined so that the steering controls work for the volume, etc. CTKHD01. Now, what we'll do is quickly show you what you get in that, that pack. There we go. All this. So we get. A trim, face trim, for your radio there. Pop that safely out of the way. We get basically the conversion lead to plug into, it's got a multi-lead. This basically plugs into the main harness and makes your steering controls work with whichever brand of radio you've used, such as Sony, Kenwood, Alpine, etc. So it's like a little interface lead. This is your main steering control interface. Comes with a little box of tricks there, two plugs on it and plugs into the harness. Now, obviously, if you're wanting your steering controls to work, this is the kit to use. If you're not worried about your steering controls and you just want to plug a radio in, then it's this kit. It's one or the other, take your pick. So in other words, you don't need this if you want your steering controls to work and you've ordered this kit. So let's get on with how to remove the radio. First things first, if you look down closely, if I can get the camera to focus here, there is a tiny, tiny slot, and you'll notice I've got a flat blade screwdriver. Now this slot is to put the screwdriver in, basically, and it, it's got a pin each side, so there's another one on the other side, and we pop the screwdriver in it and just ease it forwards. If you've eased it forward enough, the top edge should clip open like so, and you can normally get your plastic leverage tool in there and just sort of continue easing it forward. Basically, we go all the way along, and the whole panel, this whole assembly, pops forwards. There we go, it's gone. Pop, and it comes. There's the mounting lugs that were on it. This just needs to be moved out of the way so that we can get to the radio mounting bolts, one here and one here. With that safely out of the way, what we need to do then is go up to the top and this panel here at the top needs to come off. Again, you will notice a very small indentation and that's for you to put your screwdriver underneath i do say screwdriver rather than plastic leverage tool because unfortunately they're not big enough to get a plastic leverage tool underneath so you've got to be careful you don't damage your trim on these i don't like using a screwdriver to lever things but it's just not a big enough area to put your plastic leverage tool under unfortunately then lift the panel go all the way around the edge with your plastic leverage tool until it pops off there we go there's your locating dial, as you'll notice it's clicked in that way, pulls out that way. Put that safely to one side. We then are able to grab the back of the heater panel, yeah, because we're going to pull it forward. Now, this can be tricky, so you sometimes might want to wear gloves because it's quite sharp underneath. You put your hand underneath and pull, you can actually wretch your knuckles pretty badly on this thing. But just give it a, a tug. I'm going to need both hands to do this. These can, things can be really, really stiff. So if it's never been off before and you can't get it to move, what you can do is put your plastic leverage tool just down the rear and just sort of lever it off and it'll come forwards and out like this lot. There you go, it's on sliding clips, look. So it sort of mounts into those holes and they are really stiff if the thing's never been in bits before. So let's put that up there out the way and this gives you access to the other two 
mounting screws just here. Now we're going to remove these next. This is a crosshead screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver. If they're really tight and you think they're going to round, you're better off using a seven millimeter socket to just unscrew them with because sometimes these again are over tightened. To make access easier to the lower ones, if you're on an automatic, you're best to put your parking brake on and uh, put your ignition on, pull the gear lever back so you've got some extra space. This one being a manual, I haven't really got that problem. But we're going to go ahead and undo those two bolts and those two bolts now. Next up, we're going to unclip the AC control unit. So you just squeeze there and pull and this will come out. Once you've done that, you can grab this piece, pull it up, it'll unpop. It's on the poppers all the way around here. So it's on like little shoving tabs look that go in here. We're going to take all that off so it's out of the way. With everything out of the way, we're then going to move on to these two lower screws. There's one here that you can see. Magnetic screwdrivers are ideal because if you drop it down into the abyss down there somewhere, you're kissing goodbye to that screw. So magnetic screwdriver, take them out. Come here. Put that safe. Same with the one on the other side. We've got one just here, look. Take that out. Which frees up your side strips. There we go. Put that one to one side. So these pieces here can be moved. With these moved, and it is only to flex them a couple of millimetres because these stereos can sort of stick around the edge. So we've just popped it, look, and just sort of moved it across a tiny bit. Now, like I say, sometimes they stick, sometimes they don't. If you haven't got this problem, you might not even have to take that screw out and remove these. This particular one was stuck and uh, we needed to do that. So you may also need to do, if it's stuck, put this in here and just sort of free it to click and move and come off these locating dowels that are here. It's quite amazing how firm they can be stuck in when there's actually nothing holding them. So you can drop it forwards like so. What we're going to do now is just put a cloth down here just to protect the lower area because the rear of this is steel and we don't want it scratching any of the plastics. And um, basically guys, there we go, we've rested it gently. You see what I mean about sharp edges, you don't want it to damage anything. There's your wiring connectors that are shoved in there. You pinch the pins and pull. There's an aerial connector as well. Push the pin and pull. And that's it. That's how you remove the radio on one of these Honda CRVs. Thanks a lot for watching. Any questions, pop them in the comments. Goodbye for now.